Open your Bibles in Hosea chapter 2, verse 15. The title of my message today is, is A Door of Hope in the Valley of Trouble. Of trouble. A, a Door of Hope in the Valley of Trouble. A Door of Hope in the Valley of Trouble. Two contrasting words, hope and trouble. But the Bible says there in Hosea 2.15 that, that God opens a door of hope in the valley of trouble. And um, there was a place southwest of Jericho known, known since the days of Joshua as the valley of Achor. The valley of Achor, which literally means trouble. Have you ever stayed in an Achor hotel? <laughs> I actually have a card. Acor hotels, <laughs> it's trouble. No, it's not. They'll sue me. They'll watch this. No, no. The Valley of Acor, which means trouble, a valley of trouble. And it, in the book of the prophet Hosea, God said that he would open a door in the valley of trouble. And that is really the reason for the title of this message today. I want today to talk about valleys. You know, I, I don't mind talking about valleys. I spoke about mountains last week. And last week in Mark chapter, chapter 9, we, we, talked about the play, we talked about the importance and, and, and the power of a mountain experience. We saw how Jesus went up to the mountain with Peter, James, and John, and he was changed before them. And he saw his glory and he saw his power. And they had a power encounter up on that mountain. And so uh, I, I talked about uh, the importance of having mountain experiences. I spoke about going higher to places of greater intimacy with Jesus, away from the distractions of our busy lives. I spoke about the transformative power of an encounter of what I called a mountain experience. A mountain experience. And there's a wonderful scripture that says, Oh, let us come to the mountain of the Lord. And it's talking about, you know, let's, let's separate ourselves from whatever else happens around us, from the busyness, the mundane, the routine. And let's, let's take refuge under the wings of the Most High. Let's go to that place where we, 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 we come and we commune, we fellowship with Jesus, and we, and we receive a fresh revelation of who He is in our lives. I just absolutely love mountain uh, time and mountain experiences with God. And, and Jesus said, Jesus called that mountain experience, said there's some standing here, and this is referring to Peter, James, and John, that they will, they will see the kingdom of God present with power. Jesus described the mountain experience as, as, as an experience where you see the kingdom of God present with power. Power, because the kingdom of God is not in word, it is in power, in power. And God wants you to experience the power of the kingdom. I love mountaintop experiences, but what about valleys? What about trouble? What about the challenges of life? Because after all, we can't always be on the mountain. We still have to live on this planet. We still have to go to, jo to, 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 to our jobs and, and we have to go to school or whatever your occupation is. And what about the valleys? What about coming down from that place? And, and um, in fact, I want you to see that even, even Jesus, we, we Peter, James, and John, they they had the mountaintop experience. We saw Jesus transfigured before them. But then the time also came where they went down the valley. He went down the mountain. And what they saw down the mountain had nothing to do with what they had seen up on the valley. You know, in fact, as they were coming down the mountain, they, they saw a great multitude, but it wasn't a crusade. It wasn't a great event happening. It was, it was commotion. It was... Uh, it was uh, arguments. It was, uh, you know, the disciples were there and, and the Pharisees were disputing with the disciples. And, and to make matters worse, there's a man that had come to the disciples with his son that was demon-possessed. And, 
and, and to make matters worse, you know, the, the disciples tried every trick, but they could not cast the demon out. So, so what, a, what a contrast. Up the mountain, manifestation of power, but the, the, in the valley, absence of power. Up the mountain, manifestation of the glory of Jesus and power. And, and, and down the mountain, it actually looks like the power of the devil is in, in a way kind of prevailing over the situation. Well, what a difference, what a contrast. Up the mountain, an atmosphere of glory. But you come down the mountain and someone else is in charge of the atmosphere and there's confusion, there's arguments, there's all kinds of voices going around. And as Jesus is coming in, he realizes, oh, my disciples are not having a crusade. This is not a, this is, this is confusion. This is chaotic. This is, this is trouble. This is trouble. And, and as, as they're coming down the mountain, what a, what a contrast. Up the mountain, fullness of power, the kingdom of God present with power, down at the bottom, down in the valley, absence of power. And, and it d- didn't look like the, the enemy was somehow prevailing in the valley because not even, not even the disciples could cast the demon out of that boy. So in a way, it was, it was maybe the devil saying, well, do you know what? Yeah, it's good to worship Jesus up on the mountain, but you know what? I've got the valley. You know, yeah, you, you do your thing on Sunday. Yeah, you go to a conference, you worship. Yeah, you do all that kind of stuff. But you know what? When it comes to the real situations of life in the valley, I've got the valley. I'm in charge of the valley. I'm in charge of, of, the, of what happens in your world, in your workplace. You know, that stuff that you, that, 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 that Pastor Luis talks about on Sunday, you know what? It doesn't work in real life. You know what? That's the voice of a liar. Amen. That's a voice of the devil. No truth has ever been found in him because Jesus is Lord of the mountain and is Lord of the valleys. Hallelujah. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, and of course Jesus is Lord of the valley because Jesus went there and said, you oh, unbelieving generation, it's like how long shall I be with you? Bring him here to me. And then here comes the man and says, well, Jesus, I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cast him out. And, and Jesus said, since, since when has this been happening to him? He said, well, since childhood, you know, the devil throws him in down and he foams at the mouth and, and leaves him as dead. And, and Jesus, you know, he rebuked that thing and it came out. Amen. The, I mean, I love Jesus. Hallelujah. He's, he's the same in the valley as he is in the mountain. The devil is not in charge of your valleys. I don't know what kind of picture he has painted in your valley. I don't know what he has said to you in that place of frustration in the valley, but I want you to know, and I'm here just to tell you this, Jesus is Lord of the valleys. God is God of the mountains. God is the God of the valleys. And what you can learn on Sunday, it will work on Monday. And it will work on Tuesday. And it will work. Come on, some Somebody help me preach today. Hallelujah. 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 You know, 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 23 says this. The servant of the kings of Syria said to him, The gods, their gods, the gods of the Israelites, their gods are, are, are only a god of the hills, the mountains. Uh, therefore, they were stronger than we because we... We fought them in the mountain, but, but if we fight against them in the plain, down in the valley, you know what? Surely we will be stronger than they. It's like, you know what? Their God only operates, is only powerful on the mountains, but if you catch them in the valley, it will not be powerful. You know, the enemy can tell you, you know, yeah, you, your God does things for you in church, but, but what about in the, your workplace? I tell you what, his God, is Jesus is in the same everywhere. Look at verse 28. Then a man of God, Elijah, came and spoke to the king of Israel and says, Thus says the Lord, thus says Yahweh, thus says the Lord, because the Syrians have said, the Lord is God of the hills, but he's not God of the valleys. Therefore, I will deliver you, I'll, I'll deliver all this great multitude into your hands, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. I am the Lord. I don't know what, what, what 
sickness has, has afflicted your body. It's no one thing that I am the Lord. Not I, the Lord. He is the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He's Lord over that. Hallelujah. I don't know what thing you're going through. He is Lord. He is Lord. So he's not just the God of the hills and the mountains. He's the God of the valleys. Is, is, is there. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is not just with us, you know, in our hilltop experiences, but He's also with us when we experience the valleys. The valleys of life are moments when we feel, you know, we feel exposed and we feel vulnerable and sometimes we feel weak. Valleys in the Bible often are, are places of battle. But today, I believe God wants us to know that He's not just God of the hills, He's God of the valleys. I believe that He wants us to change our, the way we see this, our seasons of, of tribulation and seasons of difficulty. I want us to see it differently. Amen. And the, here are four things that God can do in the valley. Amen. God can do stuff in the valley. Number one, what God can do in the valley, He can turn challenges into victories. It can turn challenges into victory. When I think of challenges, I think of the Mount, um, sorry, the Valley of Elah, the valley where, you know, the big giant stood and defied the armies of God. First Samuel 17, verses 2 and 3, it says, you know, that Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and camped in the Valley of Elah. And... Um, and, um, and they drew in battle array against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on a mountain on one side. Israel stood on another mountain on the other side with a valley between them. And every day this huge giant, this, <laughs> this man, you know, he came there, he challenged, he defied the armies of, of the Lord. And you know, for, for a number of days, you know, the, the armies of the Lord are, they are paralyzed in fear, confused, oh no, who wants to go to the valley. No one wants to go to the valley. Let me stay up on the mountain. Let me stay where it's safe. I don't want to go down where I'll become vulnerable. I don't want to go down where I find a man that's three times my size. No, I don't want to go down. But you know what? Thank God for David. David is like, well, I don't care. Amen. Well, he's, he's big. Yeah, but he's so big that I will never be able to miss him. Oh, he's big enough. Yes. Uh, and, and praise God that the valley of challenge became a valley valley of victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what kind of intimidation the enemy has brought against you. I don't know what kind of giants of fear he has raised in your life and said, ooh, look how big I am. Listen, set your eyes on Jesus. He's the greater one. Greater is the one in us than the one in the world. And he's the same on the mountain. He's the same on the valley. In the valley of challenge, he's still there with us to slay in Goliath, to slay in fear, to slay in intimidation, to slay in anything that has perished Paralyzed you. Hallelujah. Second thing he can do, he can turn what seems like the valley of the shed of death into a valley of blessing. You know how many times the devil has told you, you're finished. There's no way out of this. <laughs> you just laugh at him. You just join God. The Bible says that God in heaven laughs at the wicked. So why don't you, we need to learn to laugh. Amen, just laugh at the devil. I think a lot of us Christians, you were all too serious. We just kind of, you know. How about we laugh at the devil? Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah, devil, you brought this against me. And my answer is, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on, laugh. I'm laughing the devil. It's okay, laugh. <laughs> Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 and 4. It happened after this that the people of Moab and the people of Ammon and others beside the Ammonites came to the battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude is coming. You know, the enemy will, would always, he always paints a picture. If, if it's not a great giant, it's a great multitude. It's a great debt. It's a great sickness. It's a great whatever. It's a devil's propaganda. Because really, <laughs> my prayer for you is like the prayer of Elijah. Lord, open 
the eyes of the young man that he may see that there are more with us than those against us. Now, let me continue reading. And a great multitude is coming down from the sea, from Syria. And they are in Hazazan uh, Tamar. We all know where that is. In, which is in, 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 in Gedi. You know, just in case we don't have a GPS. Ge, in Gedi. Uh, in other words, it, it, the, the enemy is nearby. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. Proclaim a fast roll, Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from the cities of Judah. How many of you have prayed that prayer to the Lord? If you're not a word, you just go like, help. If you don't know what else to say, go like, help. And he'll answer. Because look at verse 24. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude. And there were, and there were their dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. They didn't even have to fight that battle. Verse 25, they found among them an abundance of valuables of the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And there were three days gathering this spoil because there was, there was so, so much. And, and on the earth they assembled in the valley of Baraka, the valley of blessing, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name of that place was called the valley of Baraka until this day. You know what? God can turn what looked like the valley of the shadow of death into the valley of blessing. Come on, come on, come on, hallelujah. The valley of blessing. The valley where, you know what, you're not going to be on the receiving hand, you're going to be plundering the enemy. You're going to be plundering the enemy. You're going to be telling the enemy, give it back in Jesus' name. Give it back in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Hallelujah. It's not just with me in the mountaintop, but in the valley he is with me. Number three, it can turn the valley of weeping into joy. Oh, he's a joyful God. Psalm 84 verse 5, Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. In other words, what's a pilgrimage? You're going towards God. You're running towards God. And they pass through the valley of Baca. The valley of Baca is the valley of weeping. And as they pass through the valley of Abaca, never stop in the valley of Abaca. Just pass through. Just keep going. Amen. Don't stop in the valley of weeping. Hallelujah. Because weeping may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. As they pass through the valley of weeping, you know, they make it a spring. The rain also covers its pools. They go from strength to strength, and each one appears before God in Zion. Hallelujah. They go from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Hallelujah. When you go through the valley of weeping, just think, it's going to get better. My morning is coming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, number no, Psalm 30 verse 11 says that it, has, it turns our mourning into dancing. That, that, as far as I'm concerned, would be a miracle. Because I cannot dance. <laughs> he turns our mourning. He, we used to sing a song. He has turned our mourning into dancing. Do you remember that song? You know, I, I used to sing the song, but I ne was never good at the dancing thing. I didn't dance on my wedding day. I didn't want to embarrass myself. So if that happens, I mean, if God does that, it's a miracle. He has turned my morning into dancing, you know. But you know what? That's what God does. He turns the valley of weeping into a valley of miracles. And He turns our morning into dancing. You know what? He can give us a door of hope in the valley of trouble. And that's what this message is about. I don't know what trouble you've been to, but I've been sent by God here this morning to tell you that God is opening a door of hope. That you haven't hit the wall. You know, there is a door and God is opening wide that door for you. And it is a door of hope in the valley of trouble. Hosea 2.15, I will give her vineyards from there and the valley of Achor as a door of hope. Achor means trouble. She shall, she shall sing there. Can you imagine in the day of trouble, you, you have a song. The Lord's going to give you a song in the day of trouble. 
in, in, in the, like in the days of, your, of her youth, as in the day when she came up from Egypt. You know, God can turn a place of trouble into a place of opportunity. The Amplified Bible says, it, it gives you a door of hope and expectation. A door of hope and expectation in the valley of Achor. And I love these two scriptures. Do you have time for three more scriptures? Yes. Amen. Come on, let me feed you with scriptures today. So your, your, your belly is full of scriptures. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can leave out of this place and scripture coming in. And when the devil attacks you, scriptures coming out. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. That's how it works. That's how it works. I knew you hadn't come to listen to a man, so I may as well give you scriptures. This is what the Lord is saying. Don't go home and say, well, Pastor Louis said, no, this is what the Lord is saying to you today. You know, Isaiah 65 verse 10, Sharon shall be a fold of flock. Sharon is not Pastor Alex's mom. His mom is Sharon, Pastor Sharon. But Sharon, it's a, it's a land in, in the plains of, of Israel. It's, it's a land of plains. It's like the valley kind of thing. Sharon shall be a fold of flocks. And the valley of Achor, the valley of trouble, a place for herds to lie down. I like that. Because in the troubles of our world, God promises, to, God promises that that valley of trouble can also become a valley of rest where you lie down where you rest where you have a song amen you know normally in a valley of trouble we are full of anxiety we're full of fear we're full of apprehension you know our mind is racing you know we're so troubled and we our heart is just full of trouble but you know what God is saying God is promising and saying you know what I'll give you the valley of Achor Achor a place for herds to lie down God turns a valley of trouble into hope and rest. He removes anxiety and He leads us to rest. Anxiety affects so many people because there are troubles in this world. Jesus did say, in the world you will have trouble. But He said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. Come on. Be of good cheer. Anyone here with good cheer this morning? God, come on, just cheer, cheer up. Cheer up this morning. Cheer up this morning. Isaiah 63 verse 14 says this. It says, As a beast goes down to the valley, and the Spirit of the Lord causes him to rest, so you lead your people to make yourself a glorious name. You know, I, I, I know this. I get the picture of this. I used to go and preach many times in a place in New Zealand called Taumaranui. It's sort of a rural area. And often I would stay with farmers and everything. This was many years ago. And I'll never forget one day the farmer got me out of bed really early, like 4 o'clock in the morning. And he said, we're going to herd the cattle. I said, I'm here to preach. He said, yeah, but we're going to herd the cattle. I said, but I'm here to preach. Yeah, but we're going to herd the cattle. So there I went with him, you know. You know, and I sort of mouth closed. I was still off asleep. Ah, in his quad bike going up the hill you know and I got a picture of this I saw the valley I saw I was up on the hill and I saw the cattle by the valley the grass is green by the valley there's a wonderful stream and I saw I saw this picture of the cattle well fed well nourished just resting so the Bible says you know what the valley can also become a place of rest a place of rest, a place of nourishment. Yes, in the world, without Jesus, you know what? A valley could be a place of death. Yes, without Jesus, a valley could be a place of desperation. But with Jesus in the valley, the valley can be a place of victory. Hallelujah! Oh, He's the God of the mountains. He's the God of the valleys. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can I share with you one last scripture that has been with me for two weeks? Come on. It's been with me for two weeks. I've got to share it with you. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 11. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know. I don't know what these scriptures do to you. I just have, I think I have more fun than anyone else in this place. I don't know. I just get the feeling that I have. I just, I just love the word of God. The word of God ministers life into my spirit, health into my bones. Oh, hallelujah. 
Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 11 says but the land which you cross over to possess I love that he's a God who gives us something to possess I love that he's a God that he's not a taker he's a giver and he says I the land which I give you to pos to possess for, for you to cross over to possess is the land of hills and valleys let me say this to you the hills and the valleys they belong to us the devil would love you to believe that he owns the valley that he's in charge of the valley that the atmosphere of the valley he is in charge but you know the Bible says that I give you the hills and I give you the valleys it's not the devil's it's yours hallelujah and look at this kind of valley it's a valley which drinks water from the rain of heaven oh hallelujah for the source is an inexhaustible source it's a supernatural source it's not a seasonal source it's rain from heaven do you want rain from heaven lift your hands and say lord rain on me today rain on me today hallelujah which drinks waters from the rain of heaven a land for which the lord your god cares you know what god cares personally it takes it personally the eyes of the lord or your god are always on it the never the lord is you have the attention of heaven in your life the eyes to touch someone and say don't go to sleep till the eyes of the lord are in you <laughs> i'm joking the eyes of the lord are always on us from the beginning of the year to the very end of the year amen is a constant god he doesn't fluctuate he's not a moody god he's not a god who some days looks after you and is for you some days i'm not so sure he's not a god that right at the beginning of the year gives us a word and says i'm going to accelerate things but then by the end of the year it's like well okay let me let me do something else i'm no longer no 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 he's the same yesterday today and forever there's a constancy about our god he's the same from the beginning of 2019 to the end of 2019 and i want you to know something you don't have to fear 2020 because our god stands in your future oh he stands in your future to give you a future and to give you a hope in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah.